I'm sure that there will be a whole lot of teachers who will not agree with what I've just said. But if I am having parents teach the kids to read the Bible and learn about God, and you are not even allowed to talk about it, then what kind of mixed message are you sending them? So from now on, instead of you not putting up with uh, us putting up with your way of teaching, we are not going to put up with your secular way of teaching. My purpose and desire includes rescuing all of God's children away from the clutches of Satan and teaching them my way of life so that there is love in the world and less suffering. And if that means I need to rescue them from all those who are not teaching them the kind of things they really need to know in order to be able to endure all the hardships that can happen to them in this life, then that is what I need to do. In my schools, our primary concern is to teach them the knowledge of God and His truth. Everything else is secondary. If you want to keep working as a teacher, then you need to become an evangelist and look upon your classroom and your students as your ministry and teach them what wisdom really is. Unless you discharge the duties I am asking you to do and you turn away from filling their heads with mists on what it takes to be successful, then it will be you that is discharged. He who has an ear, let him hear the truth. That is all I am asking you to do. Even if it means you must endure a little suffering and, and be persecuted for doing so until I am able to take over the schools in your city. God is the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort. So don't blame Him for when you go through a time of sorrow and when troubles confront you. Don't accuse Him of not using His sovereign will to stop them because if it wasn't for Him and those he sends to you, you would really feel like hell. You don't receive sorrows from God, you receive His grace to be able to handle them. And for that you should give Him praise, especially since He had to endure the sorrow of giving His only Son at the time so we could again receive His compassion when we need it. And that compassion and comfort is in His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. I was betrayed into the hands of sinners. When is my hands having to sin in order that all could be fulfilled? It gave me the time I needed to write this book so I could show you that these hands really are holy and not corrupted. And that everything I stand for is also holy. And only by pouring out the spirit of both righteousness and flesh would you be able to finally believe me. That what I do is for the side of holiness. It was the only way to get you to stop doubting me and give me a hand building God's kingdom. Allah, Allah's new name is Abba. I can walk through walls, the spiritual walls that mankind has set up to separate us. Fear, pride, ignorance, and worldliness will never be a barrier to me. My love will penetrate them all. You are my witnesses that I am Christ. If you prophesy and it causes someone who is spiritually alive to become spiritually dead and unclean then cut off that prophecy and stop prophesying while you are doing your vow of separation the spirit will flow from you and you will prophesy I want you to make sure that while you are doing it, you are always praying that it is God's will that is revealed. I also want you to stop prophesying doom and gloom. Revelations of wrath are finished. What I need you to prophesy are things that help us become more holy. And by showing us how to cut off our sinful fleshly desires. 
Also, if God lays it on your heart to lay siege to something so that we may destroy it because it is not very righteous, I want you to again make sure it is according to the Word of God by praying that it is God's will before you decide to let everyone in the world and New Jerusalem know. I ask you this because once a prophecy has been given and cast to the wind, it can be spread throughout the world. It can be very hard to retract it. The giving of false prophecy will need to be punished. So my advice is that you keep it simple. Only prophesy what will help us follow God's laws and decrees. This is the kind of prophecy we need to help destroy wickedness and not any other kind. Revelations of judgment I have already given. What we need now are those that clean up this world. All other prophecy needs to be cut off. God has already given us enough so we can face the world and divide the good and evil. He has already given us enough so that New Jerusalem can be built and so that it can control the nations of the world. We do not need more prophecy on that as long as we don't reject what He has already given us. If you do not want God to withdraw His favor from you and keep you from the abundance He is giving us, then you will do as I say. Only prophesy those things that help us become more Christ-like so that we can wear the robes of righteousness like He has. And finally, there are some prophecies that I absolutely will not tolerate from anyone. And to do so will make you a ruin and a reproach among the nations. Without pity, you will be cast into the lake of fire. And you will feel my anger and wrath and stinging rebuke if I ever hear you prophesy anything against us to keep us from coming together with our Father in Heaven. Any prophecy that tries to scatter us will cause me to hit you with such deadly and destructive force that it will destroy you. And I will keep bringing it on you until you do not prophesy again. I have warned you, any prophecy that keeps God childless or even remotely grieves the Spirit in this way will cause me to inflict punishment on you in the sight of all and you will be an object of horror forever. I promise you, if you keep me from leading God's children by saying anything against me, you will be lucky if you escape with your life. You will feel my jealousy. I, the Lord, have spoken, and I do not want you trying to get people to look up to you, and your vile mouth speaks, and I will pursue you until you cease. I want prophecy that helps people live. I do not want prophecy that causes them to perish. Your kinds of prophecy has caused mankind to fall in love. I want prophecy that lifts them up and makes them a true believer. God is sovereign and with you prophesying something different from what I am saying causes people to think they have a choice of which prophecy to follow which does absolutely nothing 
as far as establishing the sovereignty of God's Word. People need to know, if God says something is to happen, then it will happen. They do not need you casting a doubt by saying something different. If you want to practice prophesying, then you need to make sure that it lines up with what I have said. So that disaster does not come upon you and sweep you away. God's word says in that day there will be no more prophecy. Because everything has been revealed and fulfilled and there really is no need for it. Of course he was talking about prophets who prophesy about the future. But it probably is good advice for you anyway. All prophecy from now on should be more like words of encouragement to help us conform to the image of Jesus and keep us from sin so we can enter God's gates. And anything different should be avoided. <laughs>